Okay, the three-sided head. So remember in the introduction we talked about the face and how it's a broadcast screen. And it's a broadcast screen for people's stories. And if the figure is a song, and I want to draw my figures like I'm writing, composing, or orchestrating that song, then the head is the first verse. Or if I'm writing a book, the head is the first chapter. And that's going to be exactly how it is for your paintings. We tend to look at things that are like us. So no matter what kind of painting you make, if there's a figure in it, your audience is going to look for that figure. And if they could see the face, they will focus on that face. And um, so that's, that's the kind of mechanics of painting. And that's the importance of, of the face in at the draw of it, really, in a picture. So <clears throat> with the head, everything has a gesture. And the head is the first gesture of the body. So the, the head flows with or against the other gestures of the figure. Um, if you don't deal with the head as a gesture, it will tend to uh, get stuck on. So you can do a nice gesture of the figure. Uh, but if you put the head on last, it'll just get thrown on like a circle like that. Maybe it'll be too small. Or maybe it'll be just too big and so um, you need to be kind of conscious of that of starting with the head and that it is a gesture that relates to the rest of the body so <clears throat> the head has three gestures okay it's the gesture of the skull the skull the top of the head the front of the face and there's a gesture in the back of the cranium all the way to the chin so there's three gestures there. The hardest part for people starting drawing is basically the beginning. It's that reticence of making a mark on the page that can be pretty intimidating. And so let's start there. You know, sometimes that can just stop people right away. So we need a really simple shape uh, that can help with this problem. And, you know, we could start with the head with a simple shape maybe like this right that's that's basic but it's maybe it's too simple and it doesn't really look like the head we want it's not very satisfying okay so maybe we can start with two two ovals that's okay that's not not bad uh, we could start with an oval and a triangle okay that's good how about this? This is a great shape. Um, it's a great shape because it's, it's designed. It's designed to catch wind and pull that ship across the surface of the water. That's an amazing thing and a well-designed sail can do that and it has power. So we want to use a shape that has power because our drawings need, need power. They need gravitas really on the page to draw our audience in. So um, let's use let's use that shape. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna start with that shape. And it'll be like a a sailboat shape kind of, you know, like this. That's kind of a bulging triangle. You know, we flipped the sail a little bit, 90 degrees. Okay, so this shape has three gestures, one, two, and three, and it's got curves, right? And it's got corners. So the curves and the corners give it life, right? The, the, the curves give it life, the, the corners give it structure. And that's what's so great about this shape. It has a balance of both. And if we take uh, the head, basically, starting in any kind of profile okay we'll make this uh, easy for ourselves and the head in profile fits basically in a box okay so that's without the nose and without the hairstyle right because the nose breaks out of the box and the hairstyle can break out of the box as well and so the back of the head is a little bit higher 
than the front of the head, so the back is a little bit higher than the front. And that jaw comes out a little bit more than the forehead. Okay, it kind of juts out just a little bit. Okay, so this will give us, um, you know, any kind of a profile. Uh, we'll be seeing a lot of the skull, or quite a bit of the skull, and quite a bit of the, you know, back of the head can work. So it's three quarter front to three quarter back. Um, so let's kind of divide that up into that square. If I divide that horizontally, the eyes are basically in the center. Okay. The eyebrows are just a little bit above that. And halfway is the nose. So just from here to here is dividing this into thirds. And we're going to place the ear because when we place the ear, that's going to really do a lot for us. The ear is going to, it basically sits in that middle third right here. So I'm going to line that up. It sits in the middle third and is at an angle, maybe a 35 degree angle, something like that. And it sits right there. So what does that do for us? Well, basically placing the ear helps us check for errors. Um, okay, so it, it's a good checking me mechanism, checking for proportion and so on at the beginning stage. And it's also separates the two shapes. So um, we've got the mask of the face and the back part of the face. And it's also um, going to be helpful to place the head in the second and third dimensions. Okay, so that's, that's what it's really helpful for. When I'm choosing my simple shapes, uh, for anything I'm trying to draw, I'm trying to design a simple basic shape. It has to meet two criteria. It has to be basic and it has to be distinctive of what it is I'm trying to draw. So if it's basic, basically <laughs> I can get it down quick. I can draw it quickly. Now drawing quickly is making good simple thoughtful decisions it's not uh, scribbling drawing really fast or like speed paintings and all that sort of stuff and you know if if i can get it down quick and it and i can get it down clear then i can capture my audience's attention i can get the attention of the audience and that's what i want i want their attention so that's key. If I can make a good clear statement like, I hate school. Okay, that's a good clear statement and it might capture the audience attention. And then I can go on and write a song about it. I can write 52 chapters in a book and make a movie, a sequel and so on. Okay, so based on that, um, based on that good clear beginning, I put myself in a good spot to keep the audience's attention. And, you know, our mind is, is kind of like made uh, to find meaning around us. And it's going to call all of that data, but a lot of the data it sees, and it's going to edit out. And it's going to look for commonalities, connections to make that meaning for us so we can navigate our way through the world or that moment. And so it's going to do its best to bring things together and make relationships and meaning between those things. Sometimes the things around are desperate and isolated. And if you're an artist, your job is to bring things together, isolated things, unrelated things, and bring them together in a new way for people. So, you know, the song isn't just a bunch of notes, right? It's notes put together in a song. It's not just uh, dance steps, right? It's it's the cha-cha, the samba, the rumba, right? You put them together and it makes some meaning out of it. Okay, so if my shape, my well-designed shape it, that's basic, what can I do? I can also, um, I can animate it. Okay, 
So if Pac-Man is just that simple shape, I can do this all day long. I can do thousands of drawings of Pac-Man, a lot of footage, and get him to do everything I want to do. And I don't have to think about um, <clears throat> any of the anatomy of the face. No muscles, no bones, nothing. And that's, that's really what I want. I want to simplify my workflow totally. So, but maybe, you know, you're not an animator, you're a painter. Well, I can animate my poses. I can animate my figures in my paintings or in my storyboards by pushing the pose uh, like Michelangelo uh, would do or Rubens Frazetta would do that. He's a great one. And he's just got these great, you know, positions of contorted figures that maybe uh, they just look so heroic and like they're about to do something or doing something. The action is awesome. And you do that with, um, you know, gesture. You do that with exaggerating the pose and, and that's kind of comes from animation. So if I can make my shape basic enough, then I can design and redesign. So if you want to work for mil, uh, films and movie and TV and visual development, concept art, then um, you're going to have to, in your designing characters, then you're going to have to design and redesign and that's your job. So it's going to help you be able to do it faster, make changes quicker, and it's going to help you be versatile because all everything that you can draw is made up of probably three or four basic forms and we'll get to that later but if you can learn those forms then you can innovate right you can add forms and stretch them out you can divide the forms you know and just start playing with the basic forms and come up with an infinite amount of ideas and characters not only does our shape have to be basic but it has to be distinctive Okay, of what we see and if if I have to stop okay and an art director pulls me off the job and says hey Chris I want you to do this um, and I have to hand that work off to someone then um, at least my idea is is clear right it's a good clear idea that communicates something and I can give it to someone and they're going to be able to execute that idea and build on it and, and keep going. So um, that's really valuable because, you know, if you have a, a, you have to leave the job, you have a break, something comes up. When you come back to what you were drawing, you'll, you'll have that simple idea there. It'll be clear and you'll remember what your thought process was and then be able to, to continue building on that. If it's distinctive, right? It's going to um, have excellent connections, right? So the head is connected to the rib cage by the neck, right? So those connections, um, the structures are connected by the gestures, okay? And those are really important because they're the connection from one thing to another. If your joints if don't look good, your audience will know it. If you're, something's wrong with your drawing, your audience sees that right away. So the joints are important for animation. And if they don't look like they can move, the audience will figure that out, see that. Same thing for 3D modeling. Those joints are where the action takes place and they won't move correctly. They won't work right for animation. So uh, they have to be rigged correctly for the animator to be able to animate it. And if they're not, that's going to be going to have to be redone so if your connections are off your drawing is going to be off so if my head is connected by my neck to the rib cage but that connection right there is off right then and I don't take care to fix it then the next connection is off the next thing is off and the whole thing's just a total disaster okay so connections are super important so let me get that down the connections that are super important 
if you have to stop, you can pass that idea on to someone else. <clears throat> that person can take it and continue working on it, or you can stop and then pick it back up because your idea is there and then uh, continue on and finish. Okay, so getting back to our sailboat bulging triangle ahead for a good basic but characteristic shape. Um, it's got the curves and the corners. And the structure, if you're going to draw structure, you can, it doesn't have to be stiff, right? You can bring some life into it by gesture, right? You can bend those lines, right? You can take those corners, you can round them off and make that block of ice become a character, a moving character, right? Just by the gesture. A lot of people make a mistake when they place that ear in the middle third, right? And it's sitting there at the halfway point, a little bit behind the halfway point. A big mistake that people make is they don't fit it inside a box. So the head is like this and it's too, too thin, right? Because they don't uh, take account of the cranium there. Okay. And so the ear is basically the only feature on the side of the head. So that's good. So on the front of the head are all the features, eyes, nose, mouth, and the side of the head is the ear only. So that's good because it creates like a corner for us. If we line up the eyes with the ear, the two planes come together to form a corner, an inside edge, right? And so that's going to be able to tell me when I'm looking up at something or down at something, right? So if I have a box like this, right, that lining up those, that corner can help me really quickly establish this thing. I can tell you its direction in space. It's looking down. This is looking up, right? By just that inside corner and establishing that. So that's what this does for us. Um, let's take that. if I take that bulging triangle and let's say I place the ear here. Well, where are we? Okay, let's take a look at what placing the ear can really do for us on this model. So the ear has a way of really telling us where the head is in space. We can get a lot out of this just by where we put the ears. So if you look at the model and the model starts to tilt, where does the ear go? It crowds out the top of the skull, right? And that's how you can tell we're looking up. If we go the other way, the ear starts to crowd out the bottom jawline. If we go this way, the ear starts to crowd out the front of the face and so on. The opposite way, the ear will start to crowd out the back of the cranium. So where we put that ear is crucial. Okay, let's come back and finish this idea here. So we had the mistake, common mistake is that the, the head is just too thin, okay? And doesn't look, doesn't look right, okay? So we've got the ear here and it's just floating there and I don't want my features to float. I don't want anything uh, to float there and be unconnected. So I want things to connect and touch, right? Because when they touch, then you can see the relationships and they look more believable. So I'm going to try to touch that. I'm going to touch that ear to the mask of the face. So I'm going to bring a line from the forehead over to the ear, down through the jaw and back up to the front. That's the mask of the face. Okay, I'm going to place the nose, the tooth cylinder, and I've got myself a pretty good face right there. Okay, eyebrow, 
Now the mask of the, the hairline could be just a simple shape like that, but I might break it up into a more characteristic kind of a note there. And that kind of helps me to break up that space from, let's say, the forehead back to that ear or to the front of the ear. It's a pretty big um, distance. So I can break it up into smaller distances and that helps me a lot. So right from the forehead to that part, outer part of the eyebrow to the sideburn to the ear, I can get there. Okay, the back of the neck starts around the eye line and it can go this way and that way. Okay, so it's kind of like a nice hourglass shape. It's wider at the top than it is on the bottom. And I can bring, for let's say a woman, it can go this way and have this nice hourglass shape, but a guy would tend to go the other way. So let me draw that real quick. All right, so here's there's a guy's head and his neck can go, can go this way. Right? And so that that kind of looks a little bit more how a guy's neck looks and there's kind of like that characteristic sway right it doesn't just sit and here's another mistake people make they put an oval on top of a stick right or even just that kind of triangle shape and then make the neck straight up and down that looks stiff and pretty unconvincing you want to put that gesture in there and give that that piece of structure some life by bending the sides bending the lines and that works much much better so i've got my neck coming down here and then i can basically put in part of the neck muscle right there and touch the ear with that so now i've got some really good connections happening because I've connected the ear to the mask of the face, to the jaw, and down to the pit of the neck. So I'm well connected and it looks better. So to the back of the head, there's roughly one ear that'll get me back there. Okay. So keep that in mind. If we do this again, now watch what happens when I place the ear, okay? A little bit this way. Okay, now we're a little more three quarter back because the ear tends to crowd out the front of the face as you turn away. You can see my ear is crowding out the front of my face. And so that's what's happening here, right? So I'm gonna touch it to the mask of the face, bring that jawline, <clears throat> touch it to the eyebrow, And there it is. Okay, so that's pretty, you know, pretty quick to be able to, to do that. And then to get to where the back of the head is, right, I can find one ear's distance and that'll get me right to where that inside corner is and then I can make that kind of change and establish the box and turn this thing into a more convincing head. Then the eye line here is where the head connects and the neck starts. So I can bring the neck muscle down into the shoulder muscle. 
<clears throat> and then I've got that good strong connection from that neck muscle from the ear right down to the pit of the neck. That's the sternocleidomastoid, and that's there. And how that fits, right? <clears throat> and so that can be a front of the neck like this. It can be um, even a back like that. See that? There's the C7 right there. And then on to the thoracic part of the vertebra. And so we've got this now situated where we're actually three quarterback, you know, and we're looking at the back of the neck now. Whereas before we were looking at the front. Now that's really cool. That's really cool. That's powerful. So let's do it one more time and uh, draw that same shape, I'm not changing anything. See how much we can get just out of that simple, well designed, distinctive shape. And I'm going to put the ear out here and I'm going to draw. The ear a little bit thicker here. We get that thicker edge. So if you think of the ear as kind of a slice of salami, right? And I just cut this part and I end up with this kind of shape like that. That's like an ear. Okay. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm thickening up this top part. On the bottom, if you're looking up, you can thicken up the bottom part of the ear. So it just gives it that little extra sense to the viewer where they're at. So if I find this inside corner, now I'm, and the ear is down, crowding the jaw, I'm up above looking down three quarter front. Right? So that's uh, amazing, amazing stuff. So you want to think about your shapes, design them, make them simple, make them, uh, you know, distinctive of what it is. And then you'll be able to start designing your own stuff. You'll be able to draw faster. If you're doing storyboards, you need to knock out lots of frames per day. And I did lots of this on storyboards and I used this exact idea to, you know, speed up the workflow because time, you know, is money. Uh, so, Hey, I hope that this really helped you because it really helped me. And, uh, I got this from uh, Steve Houston. He's a great teacher and he teaches it so beautifully. And I just wanted to share it with you today. All right. I hope that was helpful. I'll see you in the next uh, module.